Hello, this is Dave Meyer at SeniorPortraitPosingGuide.com and this is Posing and Lighting Lesson number 5. In today's video we're going to walk through the pose and the lighting setup for this image of a high school senior guy in an outdoor standing pose. This particular image uses lighting setup number 13 in volume 1 of the Portrait Photography Posing, Lighting and Idea Guides 4 volume set. You can download all four volumes completely free at www.SeniorPortrait.com posingguide.com. So let's get started. This is more of a lesson on learning to look for good natural light and taking advantage of certain locations at certain times of the day. This image was created in the alley behind the buildings that are across the street from my studio. We have an outdoor session we call the urban outdoors. All the images created on the streets and alleyways right around our studio in downtown Rochester. Initially it was popular with guys, those guys in particular, who were having their senior portraits created under duress. Mom wanted some outdoor pictures and senior son didn't want to waste any more time than was absolutely necessary. So the urban session was a good option for him. But as the years passed, the urban session became more and more popular with both guys and girls. We'd often book both the urban and the plumber house session. Urban for the grunge look and the plumber house for pretty flowers, green grass, and trees. This was an early morning session and the senior is facing northwest in this image. The best thing about this location is the natural light at this time of day. The sun isn't too high in the sky and it's being blocked. Uh, by this building here and then the other building over here. You can, this is the back of the building right to his right here and this wall here is this one. So the sun is back up here in the, in the east and then directly across the alley from him is this is a beige brick building in full sun and that's acting as a huge natural reflector bouncing light back into this subject. You can tell the light is coming from, from camera right his, his left by how much brighter his sleeve is here and how much brighter this side of his face is here. This is a nearly perfect natural light location, but I still added just a touch of fill flash. And if you remember, uh, in other videos I've talked about the fact that when I add fill flash, I look first for the direction of the ambient light, the existing light. What direction is that light coming from? and I put that fill flash coming from the same direction. You don't want to bring your fill flash in from the opposite direction of that ambient light because then it's going to flatten everything out and make it look like a blah, no light ratio exposure. Something else to notice about this location is look here how the light falls off back in this corner by these vines. Now granted, I do have a vignette on this on this image, so that's part of the reason it's darker there. But have you have you ever seen a, a lighting video or, or seen pictures in a magazine or whatever where a photographer has an assistant and that assistant is holding up a black gobo on one side of the subject? Well, a lot of times that gobo is there to block extraneous light from hitting the subject, but many times too it's used to eat light. You bring that black gobo in closer to him, then that the, the, it acts as something that eats the light and will help, help you create a stronger light ratio on one side of the face or the other. And that would be the case here. If you if you were to move him back into this corner further, the natural shadows and darkness closer to the back of this building because it's because the sun is on the opposite side of the building, so it's going to get darker this way. Uh, would help you create a more of a, a, a stronger light ratio on his face. Sadly, my beige brick reflector building got torn down a while ago and to make room for a new apartment building, so it completely ruined this location. And one more note about about this location, locations in general, this is really kind of a nasty spot. There are a couple of taverns on this street, and there are dumpsters line the alley. The whole area stinks like stale beer and well, stale beer. <laughs> There's trash all over the ground, broken glass, and I imagine if you looked around you'd probably find a few other unsavory items you might imagine you'd find in an alley behind a bar. The point is don't be put off by the surroundings when you're looking for a cool location. It's all about the light. And also keep in mind the time of day. This spot sucks in the afternoon. The light is completely different, so I only use it in the morning. 
pose here is pretty basic, of course, standing with his hands in his pockets. Remember in some of the other videos where I talked about the fact that I would always have people put more weight on one foot or the other? Well, this is one of those rare cases where I had him stand with equal weight on both feet. It kind of creates a, a defiant look or kind of a defiant stance, I think. So that about covers it for lighting and posing lesson number five. Remember to visit SeniorPortraitPosingGuide.com and download your own four-volume set of portrait photography, posing, lighting, and idea guides. They're completely free because you know what? That's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> Thanks for watching and have a great day.